Well, summer has begun in many Asian nations with extreme heat wave. Parts of South and Southeast Asia are sweating it out as temperatures are crossing the 40 degrees mark. Temperatures are rising in Southeast nations such as Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia and South Asian nations including India and Bangladesh. Parts of these nations are witnessing extreme weather conditions with temperatures rising way above average in previous years. While extreme heat, heat wave warning shave has also been issued in many regions. In the Philippines, the heat wave index was expected to reach the danger level of 42 degrees Celsius or higher in at least 30 cities and municipalities. Thousands of schools also suspended in-person classes on Wednesday. Thai authorities in Bangkok issued an extreme heat warning and urged people to stay indoors for their own safety. Temperatures are forecast to hit 39 degrees in the sprawling Thai capital, while the heat index rose above 52 degrees centigrade. I feel like almost fainting when I work outdoors these days, but I cannot choose, right? Bangladesh, the Weather Bureau said average maximum temperatures in the capital over the past week have been 4 to 5 degrees higher than the, year, than the 30 year average for the same period. Authorities have temporarily shut schools for the week and asked people to stay out of the sun to avoid heat stroke. The high temperatures were recorded just a day after the United Nations said Asia was the region that suffered the most disasters from climate and weather hazards in 2023. Many countries in the region experienced their hottest year on record in 2023, along with a barrage of extreme conditions. The report highlighted the accelerating rate of key climate change indicators such as surface temperature, glacier retreat and sea level rise. Experts say they would have serious repercussions for societies, economies and ecosystems in the region. Well, the Indian Meteorological Department has issued a fresh heat wave alert across several states. And this is what it basically says. The IMD is predicting heat wave conditions over East India with South Peninsula India facing similar conditions for the coming five days. Isolated pockets of Bihar, Jharkhand, coastal Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Rilasima and coastal Karnataka are expected to experience heat wave conditions during this period. The weather forecasting agency also issued a red alert for the Gangetic West Bengal, indicating a very high likelihood of heat illnesses and heat strokes across all age groups. The IMD is advising extreme caution, especially for vulnerable individuals, with authorities stressing the need for appropriate preventative measures. And while heat waves are upsetting normal life in one part of India, heavy rainfall, thunderstorms, lightning and gusty winds are expected in northeast India. Delhi had a sudden change in the weather, with a brief spell of heavy rain and thunderstorms lashing the city. The inclement weather caused diversion of 15 Delhi-bound flights. No significant change in maximum temperatures is expected over northwest and east India during the next 24 hours. A gradual rise of 2 to 4 degrees centigrade is expected after that. Central India may experience a rise of 4 to 6 degrees Celsius in maximum temperatures over the next 24 hours with no significant change thereafter. Afghanistan's ruling Taliban regime has participated in climate talks with the United Nations, international donors and non-governmental organizations for the first time. The de facto government's officials joined parallel face-to-face -face online sessions to discuss the impact of climate change with their Western counterparts. According to the United Nations, Afghanistan is the least prepared country to tackle climate change. 
The four decades of war that ended with Taliban's rule three years ago has worsened the woes of climate vulnerable communities. Meanwhile, foreign aid from donors has also dwindled. This was done in an effort to isolate the Taliban led government, which was considered a pariah globally. The lack of funding has made the work of combating climate change even more tedious. Therefore, representatives from the Taliban were invited to attend the crucial climatic meeting co hosted by Norwegian Afghanistan Committee this week. The event saw the participation from dozens of top universities, diplomats, UN agencies, donors, and grassroots members of the Afghan society. All parties involved agreed that collective action is required to reduce the impact of climate change in Afghanistan. Apart from the briefing, the la in, in fact, the least prepared to tackle climate change, Kabul is also ranked sixth, in fact, among the nations considered most vulnerable to it worldwide. The country has experienced about twice as many droughts in recent years. It has also recorded a temperature increase of 1.8 degrees Celsius since 1950. It has outstripped the global average of 1.5 degrees Celsius. Now, according to the Norwegian Afghanistan Committee Director, Terje Wadadol, it has now become necessary to depoliticize issues such as climate change to help the country's 43 million impoverished population that relies on agriculture for food and income. So this is actually the first time that government officials, universities, both public and private, UN agencies, the diplomatic community, multi and bilateral donors, national and international NGOs, and grassroots level society in Afghanistan joined a parallel session face to face and online with a broad range of their counterparts in the West since the change of government in August 2021. Meanwhile, the Deputy Director of the National Environmental Protection Agency of Afghanistan has called on the UN to include the country in the COP29 summit in Azerbaijan in November. Taliban was not invited to the COP28 in Dubai last year. We hope that Afghanistan will be formally invited to the upcoming COP29 scheduled to be held in Azerbaijan this year, so that we can be present there to demand our rights and share Afghanistan's vulnerability. Afghanistan. Well, Kenya's flood emergency is mounting. At least 38 people have been killed and over 11,000 displaced in Kenya following heavy rains. The Kenyan Red Cross claims to have rescued 180 people countrywide. Behind me, there are so many houses marooned by waters and uh, people are trapped inside. So we came with a, a trained team in Aqua Search and Rescue with a rubber boat, uh, with the engine, uh, to negotiate those uh, obstacle areas and try to extract the people trapped inside. Water logging has inundated farms, income sources are getting depleted and people are going hungry. As per the United Nations, over 100,000 people have been affected by the floods that began in mid-March this year. The floods have ruined our farms. I had farmed about three acres of land. All my crops have been destroyed. I will not harvest anything because of the floods. Other people's farms have also been ruined. We are hungry. The government should help us. Right now, we have no plan. We're just pleading for help. We're just desperate because all we had was swept away by the floods. Schools resume next week, yet the kids have no uniforms, school shoes, bags. It's like we're starting a new chapter all over again. They have nothing. The Kenyan Meteorological Department has warned of more heavy rain in the coming weeks and has issued flood alerts.
Now, the European Parliament has given a nod to easier green requirements for farmers linked to subsidies. With this, the lawmakers hope to placate the protesting farmers across Europe. Now, if the member countries vote in favour of the policy in May, then the changes will become into force by June. The approval will relax the environmental requirements for payment of subsidies and make it voluntary. To receive subsidies, farmers would no longer have to leave 4% of their fallow land to support biodiversity and soil health. 425 voted in favour and 130 against. The subsidies fall under common agricultural policy which provides affordable food and European Union citizens and also offers a fair standard of living to the farmers. With the change in policy, farmers will be able to practice crop diversification rather than crop rotation. Countries will also be able to introduce exemptions from the rules if they cannot be followed through or in case of extreme weather events. The changes come right ahead of the European Union elections in June. Now, EU lawmakers are speeding up processes to address farmers' concerns. This to ward off farmers from aligning with the far-right parties. Green lawmakers have criticized the weakening of the rules. They claim that the changes are not in favor of farmers who are battered by climate change fueled further, further weather, in fact. Farmers across Europe have been protesting for months over issues including cheap import and European Union regulations. On the 15th of March, the bloc proposed to change six of the nine good agricultural and environmental conditions. Nearly 282 million people in 59 countries and territories experienced high levels of acute hunger in 2023, a worldwide increase of 24 million from the previous year. This is according to the latest global report on food crises. And the rise was due to the report's increased coverage of food crisis contexts, as well as a sharp deterioration in food security, especially in the Gaza Strip and the Sudan. With a rather grim state of affairs, we come to the end of today's edition of Beyond Climate Tracker. But stick on with us because global news continue in a short break.